everybody. Good afternoon and welcome to um, an afternoon of making a patch. So we're going to be making a patch today together. I am going to an event next weekend and I want to take some patches as some trading and bartering kind of a thing and sell some if I can. And so I thought I would go through the whole process of coming up with the layout, creating the patch, and actually sewing one out together so that you can see like what all is really involved in this process. So um, things are flashing on the screen and distracting me. I will, I'll get better, better than that. Okay, so um, welcome to my channel. I am Juliet and this is Colorful Threads. And um, yeah, stop by and hang out. Um, so I'm just gonna get started. Um, I haven't even turned the machine on yet. Um, so we're gonna do that next. And um, then I'm gonna switch over to the computer screen so that we can get all that going. Jerry is here. Jerry is here to keep me company. Okay, machine is booting up. Let me see. I have all of this fabric that I made to create patches, and I'm thinking um, I gotta like pick a background color and everything. But so basically, what I've done is um, I have created some nice stable fabric in order to make my patches and I have a lot of this like strip of red here. here let me turn this around so you can see the pretty colors. So it's like this it's it's a bunch of small pieces which is fine usually patches are small unless you're doing like a whole hoop of them at the same time and a completely different style of patch because I'm using up all of my scraps for this project this is like how I've prepped them. So I use a product called Applique Magic, and it looks like this. This is the roll that I get from Madeira, and I will put a link to this product down below. I have used interfacing. I have used heat and bond, light, heavy. I've used a film that you can use to bond fabrics together. And what I really like this product. It's very different than all of those other products that are out there like heat and bond light and the fusible webbing. Because when you heat those products up, they melt into the fabric, which is fine. It's a glue, it's supposed to do that. However, it kind of goes away. So you're just kind of left with the glue kind of there. This product has a, an actual fabric. So it's like a very, very thin, now that I want to do it, it's not going to come open. Here we go. There we go. So it's got a very, very thin piece of fabric in it, backing in it, uh, webbing of fabric that's left after you actually press this on, right? So it's double sided. So the first thing you do is heat press this on because this size is fusible. And then you peel the paper off the back and you can peel and stick it. So if you're doing like, um, this works really well if you're putting that fabric into like a Cricut or some kind of cutting machine then to cut with because you'll have this paper on the back that you can kind of stick it down with. I have the Curio, but I'm not using that in today's project. Um, but it just gives you an extra stable piece to pre-cut if you're gonna be pre-cutting. Um, it also gives you this um, second side that is sticky, right? So if you peel and stick this to something, and you heat press it again, it activates this sticky side of the glue and then it bonds the back of it. So that would be bonding it to your shirt. If you peel and stick it onto a shirt because you're doing like a fire truck or a number two or something. And in my application, I'm peeling and sticking this onto two different things. 
See, now I gotta dig it all out. So I have a bag of my scraps from the cutter. And these are scraps of tackle twill. Um, you can buy tackle twill that has nothing but tackle twill. You can buy it that has a heat uh, iron on adhesive already applied. You can get it with a peel and stick already. Just depends on how many of those steps you want to have done before you get the product. Um, some of my scraps have the glue. Some of them do not because they're just plain twill. So, and the cool thing is I can use any fabric I want. I have some printed fabric from another project that I was doing that I'm gonna bond and use to something later. So you can, this is sublimated. So I wanted a heart print. So I created this and I think it was Illustrator and printed this sheet out in my sublimation printer and then I sublimated the fabric so I could have whatever color or whatever pattern I want out of my fabric. So let's not get sidetracked. I will get sidetracked because you know me. All right. So then I have this and then on the back side, I use some buckram um, and I bought it by the yard, but it's just a buckram. It's just a stable material that gives stiffness. You Usually when you use it in a sewing application, you're putting it in a collar, so the collar is stiff. Sometimes it's in the cuffs around your sleeve to make them a little stiff, um, or you'll find it used for bags and purses and things to make them stand up and have some kind of structure to them. You'll also find a buckram used in the back of your structured baseball caps. So that kind of material is what I'm talking about. Because when I'm finished with this patch, I want it to be stiff and kind of have a life of its own. If I just sew a patch on regular fabric, it's going to be flimsy. It's going to move in the in the while it's in the hoop and do all kinds of weird things. And I don't want any of that. So I stabilize my stuff. And that's what I have here. It's just a strip where I bonded it on and you can't really see it in the camera, of course, but there's like a little bit on the side from the applique magic. Um, let's see if I can find a better one. Maybe this one will show up on the camera better. Maybe with a dark background. Yeah, that one is better. You can actually see it right here. This is the applique magic that I can almost peel off, but it's a little too bonded. So this is just some regular fabric that I was gonna try maybe and just do something over top of this. Not in today's project, but it's just fabric, but it's nice and stiff. All right, so there's the items that I'm using for today, and I'm probably going to use this red, or I do have a bunch of white. I don't know. Machine is on. Let's make sure it's connected to my software. Where's my coffee? And Jerry. He wants coffee. Okay, we got machine. <clears throat> Let's get the machine ready. Take my hoop out. First thing I'm gonna do is check my bobbin. Oh yeah, I have purple in here. I was using purple the other day. Got my bobbin box. And I'm going to switch this one because this bobbin has the backlash spring in it for winding your own. I need a standard bobbin and I'm just going to use regular white. Runaway thread. Can't catch it. All right. Some 
oil. I'm going to do some oil on my hook, of course, first thing in the morning. Also, down below is going to be a link to my oil bottles. I have wash, wash and reuse, wash and reuse. I have refillable, soft, flexible uh, water bottles. They are one ounce bottles. There'll be a link below if you're interested in some oil bottle that you can refill. Um, I'll also give you a link to the, um, there's a four ounce that you can refill it with if you want to get that as well, but that comes from Madeira. All right, we're oiled. I don't know what color I'm going to use, so we're just going to leave the needles alone and switch over to my computer. Get that mouse. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. I forget that I have to click it. All right, we're going to the computer. Excellent. All right. So the name of this little event I'm going to is called the Sunshine Get Down. So I want to have something that has like a sunshine theme to it, maybe like a half sun. So let's see, I'm going to need my hard drive so that I can pull up my blanks. Okay. I'm not even going to pull up a blank. I'm just going to make the patch from scratch with you on the screen. Um, so we're going to do this rectangular patch. And let's see if there is a shape in here that I want to use. Here's a rectangle with rounded corner. Okay, so this, if you have the Design Shop Pro, there is a button on here that's an automatic custom shape input. And as you can tell, I went to the custom designs and I'm in the closed shapes. And there is a perfect round corner rectangle that I can just pull up and use. This gives me what I'm looking for, which is a walking stitch and then a single line. Um, this one is a single line, right? That's how it was created. Thank you, Nate. Um, now, that's if you have the professional. You have a quick button to just grab and play with the shapes. However, if you don't have professional, we're going to just delete all of this and start from scratch. And, you know, right now I have my grid turned on, which has my origin and the grid so that I can see where the center of my design is. And I'm going to take the walk normal stitch input method. And I'm just going to leave the default settings for this and draw my rectangle. And I'm going to draw it with curved corners. So let's say I want a three inch patch. So we'll just start by getting our shape. So I like to start in the center and work my way out to the corners because then the corners curve better. So basically it's going to be a left click to get started. I'm gonna come over, let's just say two inches and I'm gonna left click because I really want it to be um, wider than that. It's gonna be what, five inches I think when I'm done. So from here, I need to curve down to here. So to get the curve in there, I'm going to actually come to this one tiny box here and do a right click and see how it gives me this curvy line. Now I can do a left click and that gives me a nice curved corner. So I'll come down equal distance and do the same thing. Just right click on that one little spot. This is going to give me, let's see, equal distance. 
here, right click and left click, equal distance, right click and left click. And then I'm going to hit the shift and enter key, which attaches my first point to my last point. So they don't have any gaps. And now I have a beautiful lock stitch. And about the dimensions I'm looking for. Let's see, what is this? One, two, three, four. Yeah, five inches by one, two, three. Yeah, that's perfect. I don't need anything bigger than that. So to get all of my layers, I want to take my walk normal stitch and duplicate that. The second walk normal stitch is going to, um, first one is going to do our placement line because I am kind of sort of doing fussy cutting. I want this machine to stitch out a rectangle for me so that I can put my fabric down. And then the second one is going to attach that fabric down. And what I found is for the second layer, I really like it to be a bean stitch because I'm gonna come back with scissors and cut that and when I do I want it to hold really well and the bean stitch gives me three stitches instead of one this this does this have like me in the corner or no it doesn't have the little camera from there with me in the corner over there does it no okay that's fine all right so Got my bean stitch second, and I'm going to change that color. Make that a lime green just so I have differentiation here so that when I get to the machine, I can put in my stops. Now, if you have a higher level of software, I think um, Editor and Vector allows this. You can right click and go to Operation and Change Element Type. And this is going to take this shape of this walking stitch, and I need the single line center. And I'm going to add that. That's going to give me the satin stitch that's going to go around. And I do it in two layers, so I need two of these. I'm just going to duplicate that. And my first one, I'm going to color change to that blue. And I like my width for this. Right now it's two, well, it's 20 points, which is two millimeters wide. It's not very wide at all. Um, I kind of like 35, which is a lot bigger, three and a half millimeters wide, which is pretty good. Um, but we don't need that much density because this one is just gonna hold everything in place. And I like this one to be more like a 15 and I don't want any underlays. Yeah, all right, let's center this on the screen. So now you can see I've got this really nice zigzag going on and that's gonna hold my fabric in place while I do my embroidery. All right, so the last cover stitch is gonna be the pretty edge that you see. Um, I like it at about 3.8 or 3.7, nice tight stitches. And my other single line center is at 35, so I'm going to make this one at 40 so that it is wider. And I'm also going to take off my underlay stitches. Don't need those. And this is looking pretty good. There's a really little kind of weird bubble here. Let me pull that. Yeah, you could sit here and tweak on it all day. Oh, it's just this. That says, yeah. There we go. Much better. There we go. There we go. Now my pickiness is over. Okay, I'm done. All right. Now, I have my shape. Let me save this. File, save as. Do you have any chats? No chats. Okay. Um, personal, we're going to call this sunshine ha, caps locks seriously Wow. 
what in the world? Quit. This needs to stay here. This. Ah, I was hitting tab, not caps lock. Ha ha. All right, so we're saved. We're not going to lose anything. Going to get some lettering. And don't quite know what I'm going to do yet, but I definitely know I want my S capital. And pick a font. Um, you know, I'm still just really... It's a block. Happy times. There's my favorite. Get my next lettering. We'll put it down here. All right, now then. What kind of like sunshine or half sunshine do I want? Um, we'll start with a fill. And I think I want to do like a sunshine that gets buried in the bottom. Let's do here and here maybe. Shift enter no holes and starting and stopping points okay this is gonna be yellow this is gonna be a sun i'm gonna grab my lettering and put that on top and that covers ah yeah i'm liking that I like that a lot. Font. Oh, the problem with picking fonts is there's just too many. So I'm just going to pick something. And I might change that later. Since I am the artist and it is something for me, then I'm just going to kind of make it what I want. Ha ha. Because I can. Okay, so I've got my get down, I got my sunshine. We need some rays of sun coming out of here. So I was kind of thinking about doing like a little teardrop looking thing. I want to use my column one input method so that I can get um, the shape that I'm looking for, which is going to be sort of a tight start, a wider section and then a tight something like that let's see maybe a little narrower kind of want like some fat sunbeams coming up Goes a little closer. Kind of, sort of, I'm thinking sunbeam slash flowery kind of petal y looking things. Let me make that yellow. There we go. Zoom back out. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of going for. That right there. Not that. Yeah. Now all I need is about... Hmm. How many of these do I want? What's the date of this event? The 18th. I don't know. How many of those should I have? Let's just make 10 to start with.
I'm going to select, I'm going to make five, and then I'm going to select the five, and duplicate the five. That'll give me ten. Now I can move them around and I can rotate them because we have, if you click on something again, you can then grab the corners and rotate it so that we get, oh, stop grabbing, there we go, that, I have another one here, so I'll move this one up a little bit, give that one a little spin. And I'm kind of just looking, eyeballing to make it come out. There we go. Oops. Nope, nope. Give me that. Give me that. There it is. Okay. Maybe move that one. So we have five to go here. So... One, two, let me move this one here, give you a little twist. Hmm, that looks very cute, I like it. So then we'll do one, two, three, four here, and then this one. So it doesn't have to be complicated, the design that you come up with. I'm not trying to be a graphic artist. Um, I've never claimed to be a graphic artist. I'm a digitizer. I create your art in stitches. So this is me being pretty creative. There we go. How's that look? I think that looks super cute. Let me bring that one in just a little bit. Yeah. I like it. It's organic. It's free-flowing. It's sunshine. There's my design, guys. Let me save that. All right, I'm gonna switch back now to the overhead camera so that um, oh, a date. Okay, yes. Ooh, date. Texted me. Oh, oh, okay. All right, so date, we need to add a date. All right, let's add a date. So this is going to be May 19 through 20, comma, 2023. All right. Let's move my get down up because I want to keep it in the sun. We're going to put the date in there as well. I want to closest point. What does that give me? All right, after May, I think I want to trim here. And after 20, a trim. So I'm actually putting in very specific trims right now so that I don't have any connectors. Shining through. 
yeah, these can touch and connect, but I just want it to trim here and here. The rest of these can just connect and stitch. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Resave that. Let's get back to the center. Save. All right. We got a date. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Let me switch back to the other camera. And then we're going to, um, let me just go ahead and load the design so it's there. There. There it is. Some colors. We don't need all these applique stops in that spot. We do need one here and here. This needs to be yellow, which is actually there on my machine. So I will get a yellow for the visual. Let's see. And then I have some blue. Blue is here. And the black is here. But the black is after my the stitching is out of order. We're going to go back to design shop. Here it is. Yep, I need this black to go before my green. There we go. Save that. Reload. There we go. Now the black is here. Okay. So this is going to be my cover stitch. So I think I'm going to do that in um, red. Because I think I'm going to put this on red fabric since I have a bunch of that. Um, let's see, color, outline, tack down. This is going to do my first zigzag and my stitch end. Yeah, that looks like everything. I'm using the 14 by 11 hoop, which is not a problem. What else do I have? I'm going to switch the camera. Okay, let's see. I mean, if I use the 12, it'll be a little smaller. Um, but I also have the 7 square. I want to try to get the best size hoop that I can for the materials because I'm going to, you know, have some waste. So I think I'm going to do the 7 and a half inch square hoop. Perfect, then it fits in there. So that'll fit right in there. So I'll be able to use a small piece of my um, material to get on the machine. Okay, we got that. Let me put this hoop away. Okay. Yeah, see these are gonna be the strips I use, the red. Okay, and I need a piece of my plastic. Oh, my coffee. It is four o'clock and I'm drinking coffee. Okay. This was some leftover construction plastic from when I had some hurricane work done at my house. I saved it to use. Okay. Clean, clean. Get this hooped. I am going to move this up in the hoop so that I can, again, maybe get three out of this piece. Definitely can't fit two in this hoop. Okay. 
Um, we got our color set. So we're using 10. Let me check the needle. 10 is good. And we're using the red, which is 4. The 4 needle is good. And I'm using the blue, which is 6. And that needle is also good. Black as well, too. That needle is also good. Okay, so I've checked all my needles. So I've got good needles. I've oiled my bobbin. I've got good bobbin thread. We're going to hit start and get the first one made. This might be big enough. It's not. This is too small. Let's see this one. Three. Barely. This is just barely going to work. Right there on the edge. And I'm going to cut it right here. Beautiful. There we go. Now I'm just peeking under the corners to make sure I'm going to catch all my fabric. And then you know me. The mad taper. I don't want anything to move. And I'm not sticking my fingers in this machine. Okay. It's sewing right at the edge. You can see how close I am to the kitchen. I have my coffee, my vacuum cleaner, kitchen scrubber, mitts. This is how close my kitchen is. All right. Hey, that did perfect. It's all right around the edge, but now I need to trim this. So I'm going to take this to a flat surface over here. I can trim it good. I like having a surface underneath, especially when I'm doing close work like this. I have my amazing bent scissors. I just love making patches. They're so fun and you can be so creative with them. Um, They're really hot right now. Like everybody wants patches as a product. So um, there's certainly a, a good product to sell. Easy right now for sure. And I'm just trimming right up to the edge of my stitching. And I even trimmed and cut some of my stitches here because I got so close in a couple of places, but I don't care. It's going to come back with that zigzag stitch. So it covers that edge and secures it. And that's exactly why I do that zigzag stitch so that I can compensate for not cutting perfect. Because I'm a human being, I'm not a cutting machine. If I was a cutting machine, I would cut perfect. Okay. Put it back in and we're going to finish sewing this.
Hi, everybody, and welcome. We are sewing patches today. This looks a little weird back here. This plastic. If you saw the video before that has the sewing with a view that I did where I went outside and I did my quilt. And I think we did some other kind of project outside as well. When we open the back door, which is right behind this screen wall, it's all open, so it doesn't keep the AC in. So we put shower curtains from the dollar store up. <laughs> to keep the AC in the house. <coughs> While I'm outside sewing. Thanks for stopping by. And joining me on this adventure it says we have about 16 minutes on this design it only has 14,000 stitches and that's just because that big area of the sunshine has a lot of stitches in it but still not too bad Coffee and sewing. I'm in a happy place. Don't forget, if you're enjoying my content, give me a thumbs up. Stop by, subscribe. And I know. First thing that you have to do is subscribe to my channel. Hit that button. It's totally free. Why not? Hang out. Watch us do some embroidering. Ask your questions. I'm here to help you. The second thing that you have to do, pretty please, is hit the bell. This is so that you get notified anytime I go live, so you can ask me questions while I'm live, or yeah, you get notified anytime I upload a video or go live. So definitely hit the bell if you want those notifications. And if you like today's video, give me a thumbs up. Again, it's totally free, but it does help me. Give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to ask your questions. If you see something I didn't explain today, um, ask me. I'll answer those questions below. And if it needs a lot of explanation, I'll make another video with some visuals if that's what it takes so that I can help you progress the products that you put out in your shop on your machine. These can be made, patches like this can be made on any of the Melco uh, model machines. Um, Amaya, the XT, the XTS, even older stuff. You can also do this project on your Bernina E16 machine just as easily. And the Bravo for sure can make patches because you have the same stops. The applique stop is the most important stop. So um, can be done on a Bravo as well. Any of those modeled machines. Perfect. Can I be a viewer as well? That would be funny, right? Watching myself. 
Oh, I can't watch myself. Oh, well. Forty-five minutes. I'm only going to make it suffer through one patch and then I'm going to get on off here. I don't like making the videos a little too long. And I did do a lot of explaining of a lot of stuff before we got started with the good stuff. So it was all good stuff. This is going to look super cute. Might experiment with the colors, um, but I definitely like having the red background. I like having different colors of backgrounds because everybody always does a black background. You want to stand out and do something different. I could just sit and watch the machine run all day. Also, when I'm done with this patch, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to go through all of my scraps that I have and kind of sort of get them pre-cut to a piece that I can just slide in so that those are ready and get a count. I'm thinking I might make 10 or 20 of them. They're worth $14 a piece. I like how the sunshine rays are not all perfectly symmetrical going around like it's just unrealistic I like the organic flow pretty all it has left is lettering it says I have another 10 minutes make it a little faster It's running at 900. I think the project I was doing before I had it that slow, but I am going to speed it up. Yeah, we're running at 1100 now. So let me know if the sound is too much. I know the speaker does a better job than the previous one, but let me know. Hi, Mom! Hi! Welcome to my live stream. We're making cute patches. I'll have to call you later. I want to find out how the mountains look. Pretty cool. All right, let's see. Where's all of my pieces of red? Three inches, right? This one's going to probably be too small. I'll measure them later. I think I want to move my 
little sunshine on top of the word sunshine. So it goes over top. Instead of the word sunshine on top of the little pieces. So let's do that. Screen. Okay. So what I was talking about is these little sunshine pieces here. I think I want these little pieces here to be on top of the lettering. So think the word sunshine. I'm gonna stitch that first. There we go. Yeah, that gives me the little pieces on top. All right, so it'll do the sunshine, then all my yellow, then the get down and the date, and the cover stitch. Perfect. Okay, that gives me the effect I want. I'm done. Let's see. Another six minutes. Yeah, it's the gym to get down. I think I want to play with the pattern fill in here under the sun. Ooh, yeah. Kind of gives it a little texture. And lowered the stitch count a little bit. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the view. finishing the get down now and then it's going to do the date and the outside edge and then we'll be done so then by then we'll be right at about an hour yeah that sounds good so your homework is to make a patch and then tell me all about it. Do we have ice? Jerry. Where did you stop? Oh, at a bobbin. Why did you stop? Okay. Kind of bouncing between some pre-rolled uh, bobbins and some 
that have the plastic insert. Tension feels nice and tight. And then back up just a little bit. There we go. It's right at the asterisk, of course. Tiny little piece to run out of the bobbin. It's okay. We only have a couple of minutes left. Did you just play bobbin chicken? <laughs> I did play chicken with the bobbin. I really thought it was enough to make it all the way through the project, but did not. Oh well, that's why we have the reverse button. So we can back up and keep going. I'm getting all of my colored bobbins like used up. I'm getting lower on them. I'm trying, I've got like four oranges and bunches of greens. I'm trying to like use up all the ones that I made for pro past projects. And so I'm just using them up on whatever and so that I can get it down to whatever the next project's gonna be where I use pre-wound. Not pretty well, where I wind my own. And it's pretty easy to do. I have a side winder. So this lets me wind any size bobbin A, which goes in a home sewing machine, the L, which goes in our machine, or the M, which goes in the long arm machines. Yeah, cool little tool. Just finishing the satin edge. See, see it? It looks so cute! It's so bright. The light's so bright. Like washes out from the camera. No, 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 it's this one washing out down here. This is gonna be really cute. And I might make it just a little bit shorter to use more of my scraps. Like instead of it being three by five, I might make it like two and a half, like four and a half to scale it down a small amount. Ooh. Looks great. I love it. So much fun. Patch. And there's a little bit of cleanup that you do have to do, but it's not that bad. I just need a pair of scissors and I just trim any um, of the long pieces. Maybe you have a long tail. There aren't any really long ones. They're all pretty short. And then because I use the, the plastic, the visqueen, um, if I hit it with a lighter, these little like white little pieces on the edge, which are plastic on the edge, go away. This one doesn't work? Okay, so get rid of it if it doesn't work. Just gonna go around the edge, to clean it up. Beautiful. And then if you want to clean off the back, get like the whole nother thing. There we go. Back looks good. 
patch. I'm excited. I'm going to make some more. But I'm going to get off for the day, guys. I hope that you are inspired to go and make some fabulous patches for whatever event you're going to be doing or a family member. Don't forget to subscribe. Give me a little thumbs up. And, oh, wait, what do we got? How many do you have to do? Oh, so um, I was thinking like 15 or 20 maybe um, of them. So um, probably try to get 15 for them if I can get 15 dollars. Um, but I'm using all just my scraps fabric that I have. I might try a different color background. I might do a different colored outline, maybe outline it with the yellow just to see what I like, how I like. So yeah, have fun. Enjoy. Have a wonderful day. Send me your questions. I want to make a video for you.